All right. We are rolling. What's up? Hey, hey. I'm here, here with uh, Soul Candy. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. He just played his heart out for us. <laughs> it was fucking, it was really dope. Yeah, it's really cool to be here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks for having me out, man, for real. Hey, stop yelling. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I, I want to talk to you about your name, first of all. Well, well, let's start by saying thank you to Noble Kava for having us out and sponsoring Cuttlefish Collective. Thank you. I'm Samuel Paradise. This is the homie Soul Candy. And, uh, yeah, we're just chilling. If you, uh, you want to catch his set that he just performed, there'll be a link in the description. But, yeah, man, I want to talk to you about your name because, like, I was thinking about it, and Soul Candy is, like, a really cool... <laughs> it's like if you said soul medicine, I'd be like, that's kind of fucking arrogant. <laughs> but soul candy, it's like you're not being real that presumptuous about, you know, the it's limits. Ju it's, it's just like candy. you're like, I can give you a little treat, yeah. you know, that's it. I uh, I a wish I had treat a treat for your soul. I wish I had a really cool story for it, but I was a uh, I was in sixth grade, and I was um, my buddy just got some school candy headphones. And I was looking at it, and uh, I was like just getting into marketing at the time, and I was like, you know, it's a really cool brand name. Uh, I wish I could. It was like one of those moments, like you know, like when you hear a funny joke, you're like, man, I wish I could have thought of that joke. I was like, man, I wish I could have thought of that name for a brand. I'm just gonna nudge it a little bit and be Soul Candy. And That's I, perfect. <laughs> it's it way if before. If you say it, Skull Candy fast enough, <laughs> it sounds like Soul Candy. Right, it starts to become Soul Candy. Totally. <laughs> but it's actually kind of been uh, a little bit of a detriment at times. Like I've uh, not gotten booked before and told later on that I didn't get booked because my name made it sound like I was going to play like some bubblegum pop type music like what a douchebag who <laughs> I mean seriously you send them a link they're not even listening to them like what a what kind of a twat you don't want to play a show like that anyway fuck those people right and they're kind of funny getting not booked Honestly, just because of a dude. name yeah I mean unless your name's like like the child rapist or something, then I could see not getting booked. But it's soul candy. That's beautiful. If there were headphones almost named child rapist, I might have fallen <laughs> into that trap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness I didn't. <laughs> Wild tapist headphones. Mm hmm <laughs> Right on, man. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Where'd you grow up? Uh, I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, just a hop, skip, and a jump away. Um, raised there my entire life until college, and then I went to Columbia. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, it's really cool. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Greenville. Have you ever been? Yeah, I got some really good friends down there. Yeah, uh, it used to be kind of similar to Asheville. It used to be a really shitty city, if I can say shit, is that a problem? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a really shitty city. Uh, but the past, like, ten years, kind of similar to Asheville, went through, like, a little bit of, like, that renaissance-type phase. And uh, super artsy now. They got, like, they're getting written up in magazines like it's like one of the top destinations for like tourism in America now. And it just blows my mind that this little like really dinky city yeah. that I grew up in is kind of cool now. Yo, Jane, uh, real quick, um, the the room and uh, the level in the room is good, but if you need to go up higher, you can just gently do those dials on the on the tape. But we're right in the middle. Beautiful, cool. Yeah, uh, no, I love Greenville. Um, uh, I like I say, I have some like lifelong friends down there, like second family and. Uh, you know, Tony Karma, you know, yeah, that's the homie, and Jason Hampton, and oh, yeah, that whole crew. <sighs> yeah, no, it's really cool to see. Uh, have you been to the firmament yet down there? I haven't been yet, but I'm, I'm getting this bus renovated, and uh, I plan to head down there as soon as I get a plate on it. Nice, yeah, really killer PK sound system. Yeah, yeah it's an awesome, awesome spot. Yeah, if you haven't heard a, a PK or a void or a function one sound system, Choice. you should get on that. Uh, that kind of uh back at you. How do you? Where'd you get Samuel Paradise? It's a dumb story. <laughs> it's uh. Try me. So I was making music and then um. I I wanted to put it online and so I needed something to make a SoundCloud account, mm -hmm. and uh, it was so it was, uh, it's like my porn star name. It's like the my middle name Did and the street I grew up on. Oh okay, uh, yeah. So it's like one of those little like. Procedurally generated yeah. stripper names. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you know that's how um, Childish Gambino got his name? No. It was through with a Wu Tang Clan name generator, and it came up as Childish Gambino, and he was like, "Yep, that's it." <laughs> I mean, it works for him. Mm -hmm. People are on that dude's job hard. 
I, 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 you know, I dig it too, <laughs> for sure. I'm not, I'm not gonna front. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you grew up in Greenville. What, what did you do as a kid? Like, what, what did you enjoy? Uh, let's start. Like, let's say, how old are you? I'm 26. 26. So when you were 10 years old, what year was it? Uh, 2002. Okay. Right on. Yeah. So what was going on in 2002 <laughs> for a kid, like Spy Kids 3D or some shit? Oh, my God, Spy Kids, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing... That ju- man floop. Yeah. No, I was probably, like, on my way to getting strung out at that time, but that... I <laughs> no, I... I, uh, I don't Yu-Gi-Oh, was that a big thing? What, what did you do as a kid? This is, like, when I think I, I just discovered either Bear Share or LimeWire, and, and everything changed. Yeah, like LimeWire. A little, little bit post Napster, but yeah, no, I I, I can I can remember like a specific moment, uh, an age, and it was probably around ten years old where I, I remember thinking to myself like, you know what, I don't even like really like music, just like I just didn't care about it. Like I did, I couldn't tell you what any real artist was or like any songs. I just like never listened to music, and it's just weird like thinking back to a time where that was uh, the case. Well, because you were just being fed this garbage that was on the radio in Greenville, right? <laughs> Yeah, 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 pretty I much. I mean, it w- there was nothing that was inspiring to you, I would imagine, until you start getting into, like, some little scene, whether it's, like, punk rock or, you know, whatever, some uh, some sort of DIY or local scene. Right, right. You know, it all just seems like it's weird. As a kid, you really see it as a product. Like, and, like, for me, anyway, I, I always thought, like, well, this is, like, this is c- super cheesy. Like, this is clearly, like... So I don't know. I well, it's I, I mean, even with hair metal, I can remember like in the late '80s being like five and being like, "Look at this dickhead!" <laughs> like, you know, like it just seemed really lame. Like where, yeah, yeah like yeah. it's just like well, especially hair metal, but that's like but it just <laughs> seems like <laughs> so labor intensive. It's like this dude's teasing his hair and putting on eyeliner and wearing l- tights. And well, well, I I don't know if this is the case for you going up, but there's it's just it's like uncool to learn an instrument. I remember in the elementary school and even like early middle school, like for some reason or another. No one, no kid could appreciate another kid learning an instrument. It was like, oh man, you dork, you're taking piano lessons. I really? Yeah, I, d- yeah, I think I think that might be why I disliked music so much. It's just because like there was music like was for for like dorks. Is that well, what? Well, I was the taking was? I was taking piano, and for some reason, like looking back, I think I felt a little embarrassed about it, about learning piano. Uh, I'm so glad I did, but I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's just it's just weird thinking about like when you're kids. Uh, it's lame to do good in school, lame to take an instrument up, lame to be in band. It just makes no sense. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I, I was, uh, I w- <laughs> my, my folks, God bless them, but I don't think they really saw the value in music. So I was only allowed to take uh, music classes for instruments that we already had in the house. Oh, like what, like, like a recorder? So <laughs> well, no, we didn't have one. Uh, so we had a snare drum. Nice. So, <laughs> so I started on a drum pad and a snare drum, but I was pretty garbage at drums, still am. Uh, I can do my finger drumming thing, but, uh, and then there was an alto sax that my dad had uh, played as a kid, but, nice. you know, maybe up until high school or something, but uh, I never heard him play a note from it, but it was in the house. Mm-hmm. And what, uh, you, p- you picked that up too? I learned it-ish, you know, I learned it like you learn a recorder. I was in a ska punk band, nice. and uh, and then I eventually started playing guitar for that band, which I wasn't much better at guitar. Uh, yeah, they they kicked me out. It was a good move. I I don't begrudge them for it. Yeah, yeah. At the time, I didn't really feel like I was slowing the uh, progress of the band because I felt like we all sucked pretty bad. But I still maybe think I was a scapegoat. But I'm not gonna say that I just didn't deserve to not <laughs> play. <laughs> You know, you're, sti- like <laughs> you're still still losing sleep over it. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm just, just being honest. You know, it's like, yeah, no, you know, Dennis, I I love you, bro. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, probably in a similar situation, uh, trying to l- pick up guitar in a band with a few friends, and they went uh, and started um, at jazz school, and it took like we would like just jam for hours and hours and have a great time, and then like within like a couple weeks of them being at jazz school, I would get called out mid jam, be like, oh. Uh, you're doing a major that needs to be a minor key. And I'll be like, I mean, come on, it sounds all right. Like, it doesn't sound horrible. Uh, but, of course, I don't know. We, like, they just, like, kept getting irritated by it, kept getting irritated, and I just slowly got moved yeah. out. Yeah. Well, jazz, th- like, they don't really like major chords that much anyway. <laughs> you know. Yeah. 
They're like all like <laughs> diminished minor seventh and ba, 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 ba. I love jazz, but shit is tricky. No, I've come to appreciate it. I was just learning uh, the other day about uh, some of uh, I don't know. I don't even like. I, I wouldn't even be able to really articulate it that well, but like about John Coltrane and about the Coltrane steps, I think, or nice. the Coltrane sequence. Uh, it's like one of the hardest sequences in jazz. Yeah. And I was, uh, yeah, I don't know, fascinating. Even though I can't really, I don't understand it that well. I'm not much Did of a music you learn theory to play guy. It? Uh, that what no. You're no, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm fascinated by what made it difficult and why it's like one of the hardest uh, yeah. progressions in, in, in music history. But I don't know. I've, I've forgotten all, pretty much all music theory that I've ever learned. Good. Yeah. 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 No, I'm ha I'm happy about that actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Like I, the way that uh, I play piano is very improvisational. Uh, and it, it like I started off uh, taking classical piano, and like really for some reason just resented the instrument. Um, I was like getting good at getting you good at it. You thought it was kind of for dorks or something. <laughs> that was probably be part honest, of it, but like right. I d you're like, I don't know. I, I hated it. It was like well, because like you the all you really see as a kid is like classical pianists, and they're so like stiff and right, like you know this air of like high intellectualism, and it's just like it is a little off putting to a kid, I think. Um, yeah. Unless you really see like maybe a, a a funk pianist or a jazz pianist just like crushing some shit um, and really like expressing themselves, it seems like kind of really stiff, almost like you're like a robot. Right, well, I mean, I don't think I ever I ever took an instrument because I wanted to. I kind of felt like we just had this piano that my sister, that my parents got for my sister, but she never played. So I was like, I don't know, I kind of felt like, meh, I go to the shot, and then I just kind of like got roped into it, and I felt like I had to keep going. But I don't think I ever really enjoyed it until I stopped taking, uh, I was like four years in, stopped taking lessons, and then a year later picked up improv. Uh, and I've loved it ever since, but the oh whole yeah. structure of classical music, I, I, I don't know, I couldn't so stand. So that was the first instrument you learned, and when, when did you start playing piano? Uh, it was probably like eight or nine. Oh, wow, eight or nine. Yeah, I've been playing for a while. Okay, so that whole time, you're still kind of like music is fucking not that cool. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but then you got LimeWire, and you gave your computer <laughs> herpes, and then uh, the, like the, the, the world opened up to you. Right. The first STD that my <laughs> that I gave my computer was uh, <laughs> "Dirty Pot" by NSYNC. <laughs> was the first song I ever downloaded. <laughs> yeah, it's not just a clever <laughs> name. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do, you, do you remember the first song you ever pirated? <laughs> the first song I ever pirated. I don't know. I think one of the first would have been Zombie Nation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. So I'm not proud of that. What was the f how about the first show you ever saw? By myself, like without my parents? Uh, no, or without just in general. Without an adult? Yeah. I mean, the first real show that I actually like wanted to go to and shows on my own was uh, a ska punk show in Boston, yeah. uh, or excuse me, in Worcester, Mass. And it was uh, Less Than Jake and Mustard Plug and MU330 and the Toasters. Mm -hmm. And I was like little and uh, like a little cherub. I was like <laughs> just a portly little guy, <laughs> 13 or 12. And uh, our friend's mom drove us up there and she just sat in the car for three hours, which is like so awesome, Mrs. Leary. Thank you so much. Shout out. Yeah, she drove us like an hour and a half and then just sat there and drove us home. Like, what a boss. But, uh, yeah, I ended up uh, getting on stage during the toasters and getting a crowd surf. And, uh, Man, during like, your yeah, first real show? Made out with some chick, yeah. <laughs> it was dope. Right on. Yeah. Hell yeah. I think mine was, uh, I guess it's the first real show. I saw probably some other stuff, but the first real one was uh, Weird Al Yankovic. Peace Center, Greenville. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> that was it mind blowing. It was, it was insane. <laughs> was he doing? It? It's all about the Pentiums at that point. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's good, good, good memory. Yeah. That's a classic right there. <laughs> yeah. No, I like. Uh, yeah, Weird Al. That's. I I got you know I I had a couple of the albums. I I definitely played the shit out of them as a kid. There was the one that was like a jazz Jurassic Park. Um, spoof. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I remember the music video for that. Yeah, I had back that. when that was a thing. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, Weird Al, if you want to come on the podcast. Yeah, I don't even think come the kids on. know who Weird Al is. Yes, these they days. do. <laughs> you hush do your mouth. How dare <laughs> you? Weird Al. Weird um, Al could buy this place and shut us down just for saying that. 
He's a powerful man. Don't fuck with Weird Al. Not to get too into something that probably only we would know what we're talking about here, but I was just curious, that set that you played at uh, Bear Call Camp Out, that Sunday morning set, yeah, was yeah. that uh, uh, all originals? Uh, no. Well, it was a lot of like original remixes because it was an Ableton set, so um, it was sort of a live PA, but most of it was uh, reworks or edits of other other tunes, other people's tunes. Right on. That I particular set. I know I've already showed I you some love, but like that was one of my probably one of my one of my favorite sets of the oh, year. Oh, thanks yeah. so much, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it, was, it was really I cool. I it felt really good. I have to re-record it. I forgot to record it. It always goes that way, though. Yeah. Kind of feel like if I had hit record, I would have played like shit. <laughs> I always ask somebody else to just record it for me, so I don't have to even know. Yeah, it's gotta happen either by accident or like without ever telling you that it's happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, then I can just be in the moment. But uh, so but you, you just did really well with the camera in your face. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> no, I, I I'm really really digging the whole sitting down thing while DJing. I don't know if I can ever go back. Yeah, why not? Right? Mm. What are you gonna do? Jesus hands? Might <laughs> as well just sit there and focus on your work. Yeah. It's like I feel bad for like cashiers that can't sit down. It's like why? Wh wh how are you better at your job by standing? Or like why am I? Why do I take you more seriously when you're standing up? Yeah, they're all gonna be robots pretty soon, though. Yeah. So they may just want to chill out and stand up, <laughs> not not rock the boat. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. So you started playing piano then you got lime wire what what was like the what how did that blow your mind what <laughs> what was the first what was the first shit that you attached to your identity what was the first like music that you can remember being like oh this is part of me it's a good question uh, prob probably uh, probably tool i don't know i feel like so okay. cliche saying that Anima. man but dude just in general man especially lateralis the entire album is just so good uh, yeah I, I would say the closest I've, I've ever felt to uh, a, a band or an artist or something like that, just like relating to, uh, would be Tool, just on wow. a visceral level. Yeah, I absolutely love him. You like into fisting or what? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? What about them? <laughs> 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 they just get me, especially with that whole prison sex thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> no, uh, no, dude, they're just so. I don't know, man. No, I it's oh. sick. I don't uh. get me wrong. I I love mm -hmm. Tool. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, how about you? Who would you say would be the first? Well, I don't know. I mean, I um, I guess it was ska punk. You know, I was in the ska punk scene. It was in a ska punk band. Really in the ska? And yeah, really into that shit for a while. But then um, sort of later kind of got into hip hop and then, you know, kind of found conscious hip hop. And then from there, I found like drum and bass and house. And it was like the early 2000s. So... There was a, like a ton of trance and stuff, uh, like on the you know yeah it was just like everyone was driving like Mitsubishi Eclipses and eating ecstasy and shit, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. it was uh, so electronic music just sort of became part of the whole s sort of s landscape because um, mm -hmm. I w I was into snowboarding and stuff so there was tons of like Jurassic Five and then yeah, yeah. from there you get into like Bahamadia. And like LTJ Bookham or Roni Size, and all these DMB artists, and like DMB was like, you know, it was masculine enough where, it, like, you know, I could really connect with it early on before I really like knew myself fully, because it wasn't like you don't have to let yourself go in the same way that you do with like some soulful like Queen Diva house music, you know. Right. But, right. Then, but then later on that, that I kind of really connected with house and. Got in touch with my vagina and <laughs> um, <laughs> that less masculine music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um yeah. Did you do you have you did you produce any drum and bass? I've done yeah, I used to have a project called Four Alarm, um, with uh Collective One that we did for sh a very short time. Mm -hmm. But um my skills have advanced a lot since then. I'd like to re re explore it. But I did a really uh, pretty cool, uh, Aaliyah, um, Step Two remix. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and a few other. I be I put out like a four or five song EP, um, but it became like a lost tape. I uh, I lost the master, so then I had to 
kind of remaster some rough file that I had saved somewhere. And uh, so it's my, a lot of my band camp is like sort of and there it's indicated it's kind of like basement tape sort of shit because uh, I lost I lost most of it. But that's OK. I, I want to re-explore it. At I've, some been point. I've been getting into drum and bass way too late in life, especially um, a little bit slower, but breaks, especially like I've yeah. like I've dug so deep in the breaks this year, man. It's become by far my favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anytime that like a uh, an artist can kind of like meld like new school with old school breaks, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. What like uh you you like that like Florida style or like New York breaks or what what kind of gets your uh, what gets your goat? I I don't know if <laughs> this falls into like if if this is like an actual category, but UK breaks. I like a lot of a lot of, yeah, a lot of like artists out of like there. UK funky. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It just seems uh, less less driven by hooks and more driven by the beat and the drums. Yeah. You know, and I, but uh, yeah, I really dig that. Do you like that like space like head spin glow stick shit, or you like the like more like uh, sort of uh, vocal driven stuff, or what what kind of stuff do you like? Uh, heavy heavy melodic type like liquid stuff. Um, I don't know. It'd been kind of like I like that, but I don't even know how to really describe it. You know who Luke Vibert is? Yeah. Yeah, his his kind of style. Like I don't know. I it's I I really have no idea how to articulate. It's kind of like like, a, like an urban weird carnival style. Yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. That's my attempt. I guess I probably shouldn't do this, but uh, fuck it. You know, I uh, DJ Icy was like a uh, kind of a hero of mine, and uh, I ain't got to open for him. And man, that dude is a fucking twat waffle. Yeah. Let me tell you. Huge douche canoe. Wait, I'm how so? I'm looking at you, I see. You know you 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 you're old and you're a dick and you're not <laughs> as important as you think you are. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Fuck you. I looked up to you. You were a dick because you just said hi. That's all. That's my message to I see. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I don't That's have a follow. Real. I don't have a follow message, talk. but I, I, could, I could I could feel the cold coming off of that. Well, have you ever opened for some? I mean, I've had a lot. I mean, I don't really even ever expect to talk to to people I'm opening for, um, or or expect anything out of them at all. But uh, it almost seemed like he had gone out of his way to be like really like, I don't know. I don't know what his deal was. Yeah, uh, because we we definitely crushed it. I think that might have been part of it. Was that I I've I, I don't want to speculate. I, I don't, don't know what his issue was, but uh, he uh, he was. I wasn't the only one who was like, put off that night. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel I've definitely had that happen a lot of times with a lot of different artists that I really look up to. Yeah, and uh, I feel weird. I'd feel weird saying it, just in case it got back to them or something. Yeah. I don't know. I, well, yeah. no. I mean, uh, the only reason I, I say totally it about Icy is because he's old and his career's over. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 No, I'm but just being provocative for <laughs> likes. <laughs> really. I'm just trying to create controversy. Shots fired. Pew, pew. Let's battle. <laughs> um, so what? When did you start under the name Soul Candy? When? Uh, yeah, that was probably seventh grade, and then I started producing senior year of college or no, senior year of high school. Sorry, I produced for like I don't know, like five six years. I had I had about like. 25 songs or something like that which like sad news um this uh the laptop that i had all those songs on uh crashed a couple months ago and i had taken all my songs offline and so i, I like lost all 25 songs i ever made yeah, yeah. that happened to me like uh, Super two sucks. or three times actually i found some of them through various sources but yeah hence the basement tapes yeah, you know? yeah. i'm not i'm not butthurt over it it's yeah like it's kind of like you know wipe the slate clean oh i mean i cried i called my mom <laughs> I was really upset, <laughs> and uh, and then I just kind of was like, "All right, well, you have this in you. You know how to do it. Like, they weren't, you know, you were proud of them, but you knew they weren't really it's that. It's not good. your best stuff, yeah. Yeah. So you were just like, "All right, well, let's start over." Yeah, it's funny. I think my you mom know? was more upset than I was. She like it was like she wanted to save it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like. Listen oh. to it when she's God sad. God bless her heart. <laughs> oh, dude, she's a sweetheart. Yeah, are your parents supportive of your your music? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, are are they they listen to it? They're they're into it. Uh, <laughs> they probably tell me that they did, but I don't think that they're really into electronic music. No. Um, 
No, it was uh, when I was uh, mom's like, not bumping in the Subaru. Well, anything. when I was when I was like just getting into uh, dubstep, like driving with my mom driving me to school in like early high school. Uh, what was that? She like was two thousand eight or something. Yeah, yeah, about two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah, she was she was she was a little into dubstep, which was kind of fun to watch. That's but funny. Yeah. Well, early dubstep was really good. Yeah. Well, I d- I, I remember um, back before I really before even knew what it was. It was all broy, you know. I remember like I'd heard of dubstep and I didn't exactly know what it was, but I remember going to a pretty light show and thinking that that was my first dubstep show. I was like, man, dubstep's all right. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> a bass music show. It's <laughs> close. It's pretty damn. You were in the right ballpark for a young kid. Yeah, you know? yeah I guess so, yeah. It's like electro <laughs> bass music. But that, that was probably the first time that I really fell in love with going to electronic events. Um, I think I was like Bonnaroo 08 or something. Oh, really? Uh, Bonnaroo blew your, blew your tits off? Yeah. Oh, well, shit, man. Yeah, I was, like, big event. I was like 16. I had no idea. Like, I'd never been anything like that. It's fucking crazy. Hell, yeah. 16? And you, yeah, how'd you get there? Um... My brother got roped into it with one of his friends, and uh, my parents had no idea if like what Bonnaroo was, and they were like, sure. "Yeah, yeah, it'd be fine." Yeah, go see this. The it's music. like it's like going to, to Six. <laughs> fl- it's like going to Six Flags, yeah, only with same with thing. lots of drugs. Same thing. Feels like a roller coaster, dude. Yeah. Have you ever been to Bonnaroo? Uh, it, it gets a hard. It gets a hard rap, but yeah. it's a it's a good it's a good place, man. Yeah, I went. The f- second year, I think, and like I believe it was '03, maybe. Oh shit! How old? How old are you? Uh, pretty old, bro. What? Thirty? No, I could be president. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh right on! Hell yeah, man! Was that thirty-five? Yeah. Yeah, cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. How was uh Bonnery back then? Was that that was still on Manchester at the farm, right? I mean, it's still in a no. It was still even back then, like. I can't even imagine what it's like now, but it was still an enormous festival. And for me, like personally, I I like events like maybe a thousand people or less, max. Like, you know, for a festival like say four, five, six thousand um, is ideal. Anything more than that, I'm gonna need some artist credentials or a VIP pass or a golf card. I'm you get like that. I'm just a like crowd anxiety. I guess no. I'm just old. I <laughs> I you I've can, been you can't be bothered dude, I've with been that doing shit. this shit for a long time. Like, yeah, yeah. just give me a fucking golf cart, man, dude. There's nothing I've sadder. Paid, than I have it. paid my dues. I have paid full face value for so many shows. I've, I've, I've freaked out in the woods. Got, I've got naked. <laughs> I've helped people. You know, I've given people we nickname Henry Winkler rides. You know, because they look like the fawns. Mm-hmm. I've done my part. I'm. I feel like they. Sh- I just need. I'm not gonna go unless you give me something. No, I get that. It's <laughs> like, it's like, like, who the fuck wants to ride the rail anymore? You know, type shit. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's not that I I feel entitled to it. It's just that I get the opportunities to either perform at or attend small uh, events run by friends, and I sort of get my fill that way. So, um, if I'm working or you know, I, I just don't really go to like huge events for fun. Right. I right. would go I would go to work right. or uh or whatever and and not to say that I wouldn't have fun mm. but you know, I can think of like a bunch of things I'd rather do with a week than Bonnaroo, you know, yeah. a week off. Especially when it's like hundred degrees outside. Yeah. Um, I got I got lucky for a little bit, my uh no, I mean no hatred at all. Like oh no. I, I think that's great. You know, it's probably a government sigh up, but that's fine. <laughs> right. But uh, no, I think it's cool. You know, I I think it's great that all these kids are getting turned on, even if they are sort of like building this archetype of what they're supposed to be in their mind and kind of like pursuing that. That's the that's my only issue with interesting it is perspective. There's like this. Um, I don't know. You see people. Are you talking about like the archetypal? festival kid well the more like the coachella kid like the like they don't really know what a fe- like they're in costume as a festival kid sort of thing right. which is fine because like you got to figure like you throw a bunch of shit at the wall and then a few people are gonna stick and then those are the people who end up becoming like real deal <laughs> and you, some you cutting know, edge fashion over there but i do believe it is a cia psyop 100 percent hmm Pretty much every music festival since Woodstock and everything from the Grateful Dead on in our, in our community they're just on a large scale has pr- been probing CIA us. CIA psyop. 
To do what? Well, to keep kids involved in, you know, partying and, and enjoying themselves instead of uh, learning about what the fuck's going on. And, uh, well, it's a very welcome distraction. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can, um, you can do all sorts of studies about how much crime goes down when you allow drugs or how much crime goes up when you have zero tolerance policies on drugs or what happens when you get 10,000 people and you mm -hmm. create a mm -hmm. completely anarchist. There's all sorts of reasons you might want to. Um, but I would say mostly to keep people, uh, young people especially, uh, complacent until they get knocked up or have careers and then they're too busy to really fight or learn against the system. Yeah. Well, if you're right, they at least make it a pretty entertaining psyop. A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it would like be effective if it wasn't. I mean, I'm not saying like I've learned. S I mean, I my, my whole identity is based on events like this, and and the way that I see the world is based on you know that culture. So, um, uh, you know, I give them all the credit in the world <laughs> to to opening people's eyes, but I do think that. W it's one thing to learn the knowledge, but then when we go back to Babylon, when we go back to our regular lives, how many of us are really implementing these epiphanies right. into our everyday life? Right. And how many people are living by these utopian ideals that we um, all agree to live by, you know, temporarily out in the woods? Mm -hmm. And so th that's my only caution or, or plea to to the youth would be to say like remember how good you feel when you're at one with everything and mm -hmm. try and bring that back to your job at target or whatever you know <laughs> like try and try and bring it back into this world because right. it's like a different reality and it's it's good like from the psyop point of view it's good to keep it in a different reality because mm. then you can keep the machine running mm -hmm. and you can just create temporary blow-off valves mm -hmm. over here mm -hmm. you know it's been fascinating uh it, i think it took me moving to Nashville to even like really realize that how many there were uh but like the just the small transformative festivals like connection comes to mind or other stuff like that uh i'd been doing before that just pretty much Bonnaroo every single year. I, I actually started working a little bit of festivals. Um, there's a festival in Vegas called Life is Beautiful mm. uh, and got a lucky opportunity to go intern for that uh, with my sister. And that kind of got both of us involved with Superfly, which is the uh, company that does Bonnaroo. Yeah. Um, it, get this, man. It's the biggest. It used to be MCP back, back then, but I think they've sold it. Well, they just sold to Live Nation recently. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's very unfortunate. Uh, but... Um, D we got so lucky, like, I, I, I can't believe that this was actually a job, but we got to go to festivals, and, like, our only duty uh, was uh, they had, like, a live stream going on during the festivals, and um, they wanted during the live stream, which was, like, delayed, actually, like, 30 minutes or something like that, but they wanted during the live stream to be able to say what song was playing at the time, so my job and my sister's job was just to go up to the manager or the artist after their set and just get a set list, and then just take that from point A to point B in the video trailer, and that was it, and... Uh, it, it culminated in like maybe like 30 minutes of work a day with a free ticket to a festival and like a hotel. Uh, Sweet to deal. Totally spoiled me, man. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, did you just enter like a lottery or write an essay or some <laughs> shit or what? How did that work? Uh, you get dude, my, 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 my sister is. Do you have an inside track? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. It's uh, I I got to end with the uh, with the people putting on the psyops. Yeah. But no, uh, that's good. Yeah, my sister just I like. I knew you were a fucking narcotics agent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I do kind of give off the, those vibes. No, not at all. You got anything coming up you want to talk about before we wrap up? Oh uh, shit. Um, there's a couple. Well, the shows coming up. Yeah, I guess. Uh, shows or music uh, w links. Anything you want to plug? Anything else you want to talk about? We got like five minutes, ten minutes left max. So yeah, uh, got a couple of shows coming up. I got um, uh, actually. I I don't think I can announce them. I don't think any of them are actually announced yet. Um, Ooh, super secret. Ooh. Stay tuned yeah. to Soul Candy <laughs> for <laughs> more announcements uh, coming soon. They got a couple of shows coming up here at Ashley Music Hall. But beyond that, yeah. I don't know. If this is like it's totally. It's it's high security, top top security clearance, right? <laughs> it's like you don't yeah. have, uh, you can't release it to the public. I yet. can't even believe I'm even bringing yeah. it up. File a Freedom of Information Act <laughs> request to find out Soul Candy's upcoming PSYOP <laughs> shows. <laughs> 
Uh, but beyond that, and this is like totally unrelated to music, but uh, if anyone's listening, I just uh, this year with uh, two other friends started a digital marketing agency uh, yeah. called uh, Dolo Digital. We're down in Arden. Dolo, D-O-L-O. Yeah, Dolo Digital. Um, uh, I I can't I can't find anyone else in town that has uh, the low prices for the same quality that we put out. So I don't know if anyone here needs well, any marketing help. Are you doing like search engine optimization or producing commercials or what? Like what specific area of? Yeah, we w mainly mainly digital focus, but we we are full service. Uh, like I've I got experience doing commercials and stuff, so we can basically do whatever you want. But uh, like right now, so I, I would say that amplification and stuff like that. You're sort of just kind of creating uh, uh plans for companies to yeah. to promote their product individually, custom tailored to that business, basically. Yeah, yeah, we're actually we're actually really excited, man. We just got um, going into the new year. We got the Grove Arcade as a client. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, that's my plug. <laughs> oh yeah, Dolo Digital yeah. for all your marketing needs. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, it's You're been a it's been a pleasure. Yeah, marketing is the devil. We're here with Soul Candy. Sell your soul. Sell your soul to, to Dolo show. Digital. <laughs> no, I'm sure they have great intentions. He's a good guy. We appreciate y'all. This is the Cuttlefish Collective. Thank you to Noble Kava for sponsoring us. And thank uh, you. Yeah. Yeah, thank One you. Love. Thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate, appreciate it. you. Happy to be here. Make some noise for Soul Candy, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. All, mm -hmm. all right. Signing off.